What's happening, everybody? Welcome to That Knife Show 26. You were the reason I don't listen to a podcast with earbuds in anymore. Eat me. So we've got a lot of really cool knives, really cool news, uh, and a lot of stuff to get to on today's show. Um, And you know what? Isaac's going to edit this one. So anything and everything we say wrong is Isaac's fault is what I hear. That's exactly right. I like this. Yep. So before we get started, a little bit of housekeeping. Housekeeping. You want me to fluff your pillow? No comment. <laughs> Uh, if you like this video, folks, be sure to like, hit that thumbs up button. All right. Subscribe to our channel. Follow us. If you're on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, be sure to follow us. Um, subscribe on YouTube and ring the notification bell. So you'll know and be notified. Get it? No notified. Is no, that just no, just no. <laughs> when we drop new videos? All right. Without further ado, let's light it down. Let's li- Nope. That's that's not right. Light it up. Light it up. All right. So, we have knives. Greggles, we got knives. We have lots of knives. We got lots of knives. Where are we starting? So, I have no idea. I think we should start with this little bugger. I like um, those. So these have been super popular, and uh, this is in our little miniature buoy line. Mm-hmm. Um, this one is called the Spanish Notch Spanish buoy. Notch. And as a filming, it's not up online yet. Yeah. Um, now, we should have this one online and available uh, before this actually airs. Mm-hmm. Um, but We've already talked to Al and the team. They're getting it up. So we're going to show that one right there. Um up close now this one's coming in with the 440a on the stainless steel clip point blade right there it's got the spanish notch right there now um we were talking to brian and there is someone out there that has uh, a really cool video on the history of that spanish notch and uh why it was made what it's there for and the uh, actual intent the and the original design i think that's something we need to get into in our knife history and knife knowledge and yeah things like that. absolutely so, so, we'll so watch that and find out ourselves yeah so this is a really cool little knife right here um does not come with a sheath but no. i think that's going to be a, a future video that we might do we might make a little sheath for this we may, need to speak, um, we may need to reach out to somebody that we know that does leather and things like that yeah so, uh, also, these up-close shots are brought to you by our Lancelot Leather close-up cam. And um, that's who this mat was made by. He does a phenomenal job yes. at leather products, leather goods. So, check out Lancelot Leather on IG. Um, this is a really cool little knife. Now, what's the price on this one? Most of them are in that fourteen ninety nine range. I'm yeah. going to expect that one to be right in yeah, that range somewhere well. in there. And it does come with the magnetic stamp box, so yep. Isaac's going to love that. Uh, we, this is going to be the third one in the series so far, and yep. I'm really looking forward to seeing what other ones they come out with with these little novelty knives. It is sharpened, and even Brian was saying it makes a great letter opener. Yes, it does. Absolutely. I think I might have to get one and keep it on my desk I figure that'd become for opening my fan mail. You need more neck knives. You're not even wearing many today. What's wrong with Do I even know you anymore? Let's stick with Rough Rider because we also got some new Rough Riders in. Yes, we do. And we're not going to get to the series just yet. No, we, um, got, some, we got some singles left. So uh, these have been all the rage. These have been super popular. Mm-hmm. This is our Bolster Lock series. Um, and we got our Bolster Lock Half Hawk right here. And uh, this thing is super, super cool. We're going to take a look at it on our Lancelot Leather a Close Cam. Now this one's coming in with the 440 Razor Sharp Steel Blade. This is a bolster lock, and this is um, RR1959. Red saw cut bone on the handles. I got the uh, RR diamond shield right there. It does have the big R stamp on the bolster. 
Um, now, we've said this before. Those are going away. Um, we have listened to our customer base, but On there were series. there were a lot of knives that were already in production um, before uh, that actually was uh, decided on. So um, this one's coming in with the red saw cut bone. It's got the half hawk blade, um, and these have been super popular, and we're super excited to have that half hawk version. This is a bolster lock. So what that means is the bolster is uh, integral. Uh, with the liner on this one specific piece right here. So it's actually mounted to the liner itself, and it is a uh, kind of a liner lock, but it, it's considered a bolster lock because that bolster does separate right there and move right over so that it locks that blade in place. I'm really digging that one. And 440, half stops, lifetime guarantee from Rough Rider. Uh, you can never beat that. And, and 1299 Fourteen twelve ninety nine somewhere. Fourteen ninety nine, twelve ninety nine, somewhere in, in there. Range. This one's not online just yet as of the taping I of this. I stole these off of people's desk. The truck came in. Yep. I looked at it and went mine. So that's a really cool one right there, and I dig the color. Red's my favorite color. So really, really dig that one. I didn't know also, you were an Alabama fan. How dare you speak such atrocities? Speaking of I ones said that red, are, not crimson. There you go. That is a good point. Yes. Speaking of other knives I stole that are not online yet, that is one as well. This one? Yes. So this is from our Stonework series, and these have been pretty popular. This is the Hawkbill version, mm -hmm. and uh, we chose this one to show off. We wanted to show off a couple of different things. So this one's new, um, but we chose this one because it really shows off, um, like, the different materials on the handle. you got the abalone. Um, you've got the uh, the composite materials in there. you turquoise, got the turquoise. Jasper, agate, uh, crackled synthetic. Yep. Brass liners with nickel silver bolsters. Uh, and there's just a lot of real estate on that one. Yeah. Um, and I love the swedging on the blade up mm -hmm. top. Um, now, now, what is it about those bolsters that's really important? Everybody's been saying. <gasps> no R. No R. No R. But and also, yes. um, one reason we wanted to feature these is because the steel has changed on these. Mm -hmm. um, and just recently as well. So uh, now all of these, all of the new ones that are coming in, are going to have 440B on the steel. And if you haven't had a chance to watch our um, Blade Steel series, Why we not? just released a video Why have you not um, watched? on 440 and specifically the differences between 440A, B, and C um, to kind of give people uh, kind of a primer um, on what the A, B, and C mean and... Um, and the difference between them and, and what denotes that difference. Let me so know when we get to F, that's what I was used to on my report cards. There, there is an there is a four forty F. <gasps> Did we talk about it? No. Did, did because we... it is not used very much in blades. Aww. So this is a blade steel series. We still have one more in the Rough Riders that just came in. And this one is an addition to one of our most popular series that we've done recently in that blue jean micarta. Mm -hmm. Boop. The Loud. faded. Faded denim macarta, the faded blue jeans, mm -hmm. and uh, this is the uh, toenail, mm -hmm. and this one's been uh, super popular as well. I think that one is up. That's R R R R two three four eight. There, eight. <gasps> we have pictures. We have descriptions. We have things. This that one's one? coming in at seventeen ninety nine, and this one is super cool. We're going to show it up close. That's a lot of metal for, uh, for yeah, seventeen ninety nine. It's uh, This is a really, really cool knife right here. I'm digging this thing. And I love um, I love the elephant toes anyways. Mm -hmm. uh, they're some of my favorite patterns. I love the way they feel in the hand. Um, now, this one is uh, just like all of the ones in the Faded Blue Jean series. going to have the uh, match strike pulls. Um, the handles are the denim micarta. It's also going to have half stops on both of those blades right there. Um, so that's a big deal, especially with blades this big and with uh, handle stock this big. Um, and this one's uh, 4.12 inches closed and weighs 5.57 ounces, coming in at 17.99. Um, just a really, really pretty knife right that there. That orange underliner makes it really pop. Yeah. And I love any time that we get an elephant toe, a sunfish, those billboard bigger yeah. knives. And they really speak to a lot of people. Oh, absolutely. Now, do we want to stick with the Rough Riders, or we did get some more slip joints in. Which way do you want to go with this? Let's go ahead and do the Rough Riders. We'll cover the Rough Riders gotcha. first, right out of the box. Now, this is a new series. We're not going to go over every single one of these. 
Um, these are known and the details on all yeah, of them. These are known patterns. Yeah. You know them. We love them. But this one has been one that everybody's been looking forward to, and this is my favorite one out of all of them. This is the Tortoise Shell series, and I'm going to go ahead and give a disclaimer on these. So, um, with it being tortoise shell, the finish uh, and the colorization is going to vary slightly from one to the other. And this one has been uh, definitely the most popular right here, and that is the Cub great, Lockback right great there. fifth pocket knife. Yeah, absolutely. And this series is also coming in with 440B on the blade steel. Um, so something a little different that we wanted to try there, and uh, we hope you guys really enjoy that uh, little upgrade on the blade steel. Um, and really cool uh, shield on mm -hmm. these with the uh, tortoise shell. Um, the tortoise shield, if shield. you will. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we've got the cub. We've got the uh, trapper pattern right here. Uh, we've also got the doctor's knife. We've got the uh, large stockman right there. We've got the moose pattern right there. And probably the second most popular one everybody's been asking about. And we've got the cotton sampler. That thing is really cool. And we don't the do the cotton size. sampler in uh, in all of our series, and mm -hmm. that's that's one thing that makes it so popular. Um, but we do have it in uh, this tortoise shell series right here. And you so, can even see just in that shot right there of the colorization on all of them changing in the light. So even though this is a synthetic, this is not real turtle shell, don't come after us. Right. Um, there's going to be a lot of difference in colors, a lot of difference in each pattern that you get. So it's going to be really unique. You run, yeah. Even if you order two of them, they're not going to be identical. Yeah. So cotton samplers coming in at $12.99. Um, the moose pattern coming in at sixteen ninety nine, mm -hmm. the stockman, the large stockman coming in at sixteen ninety nine, the doctor's knife coming in at eleven ninety nine, which is a great deal right there. The trapper is coming 14. in at fourteen ninety nine, and, and the cub under ten bucks for the cub. We we under need to get a hold of uh, Big Red because bucks. he does his uh, bargain bin. Big Red yep. bargain bin under ten dollars. Guess what? That one is. Yeah, I really dig oh. that. Um, and love having that finger troll right there. Yeah. So that's a new series from Rough Rider right there. Check those out. Um, really excited to have those in, and those have already been very well received so far. Yes. we're doing. And let's stick with slip joints simply because we're in that mindset right yep. now. Yep, 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 and yep, yep. these yep, yep, I'm yep, yep. very excited about. We are up to five. I've only got two of them up here because right. they're so popular I couldn't steal the other three. And there you go. There you go. So um, this is going to be our new exclusive from Baron Sun. And uh, we've these are the uh, green bone, mm -hmm. the hunter green bone. Um, we've got the stockman and the barlow up here right now. The barlow um, is beautiful. Yeah. And uh, so the thing about these is these are our exclusive from Baron Sun. These are going to be a little bit different. Um, so these are coming in at uh, what, forty nine ninety nine on most of these. Ninety nine each on all five patterns. On all five patterns. Um, so if we look at this up close, it's going to be a satin finish on uh, uh, satin, almost stone wash finish on those blades. Mm -hmm. um, and you'll have the Bear and Sun logo here. Um, you're going to have oh, that says C S U S A and C S U S A. That's carbon steel. These are ten ninety five. Ten ninety five. Ten ninety five from Baron Sun right here, under fifty bucks. Ten ninety five mm -hmm. um, for a handcrafted slip joint knife right there. That's an exclusive. Okay. The Barlow um, is three point five inches closed, weighs in at two point six ounces, and that hunter green on each of them really pops. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, one thing I will say is you're gonna want to keep uh, these blades nice and oiled mm -hmm. because this is 1095, so carbon steel. You're not you're not talking about stainless steel right here. And brass um, miners on those as well. And yes, and these things are just absolutely gorgeous. Fantastic deal um, from Bear and Son right there. Definitely need to check those out. If you're looking for a gift for a knife collector, this is something yeah. that they don't have. These are brand new. American-made knives, ten ninety-five still, and fifty dollars each. That's made down there in Alabama. That's, that's right. right. That's, that's right. something to be carried every day, shown off every day, and yep. put to work. Those are not safe queens, and at that price, I, I don't mind using them. Right, right. And um, 
now we're going to switch gears a little bit in our featured products. We've done some really affordable stuff. You know, we had our, mm-hmm. our Rough Riders, including our Cub, that was under 10 bucks. Yeah. We had our Bear and Son that was a little bit of a step up, going up to forty nine ninety nine for American made. Yeah. Um, now we're going to take a couple of steps up with these next two featured products. This one I, I just saw today, and uh, as of right now, it's not on our website. It will be um, as of right now. This is just as going as of the as of the filming of this. This is just going to be an in store um, availability right now because we don't have but a couple of these. But this is the uh, Victorinox Special Edition 2022 Picnicker, and uh, this one is super cool. So um, only 6,000 of these made, and uh, the really neat part, we're going to show it up close right here, is um, right here you've got the year, and you've also got the serial number, the number out of 6,000. So um, each one of these are numbered. Um, That's going to be a Damascus steel blade on the main blade right there. Mm Mm-hmm. And um, I will be honest, I did not know what this was. You uh, actually informed me of what this was. I saw it and was very interested. I was like, what, what is it? It's a cheese blade. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a sharpened cheese blade. Yes. So traditionally, those are non-sharpened. Yeah. But because that is a picnicker, it is a sharpened one, so you right. can not only use it for cheese, but fruit and everything. And it makes sense because now, after, after knowing that, after realizing that, these cutouts in the blade actually mm-hmm. facilitate that. So it works kind of like a Santoku knife does. Um, um, with the uh, divots in the blade, um, keeping the uh, suction from occurring, mm-hmm. and uh, your cheese or whatever you might be cutting, um, whether it's vegetables or something like that, getting stuck to the blade. We do a, we do uh, adult lunchables at my house a lot, so we cut up the meat, we yep. cut up the cheese, and the, uh, everything else. They make the charcuterie boards. <laughs> Carcucci! Exactly. <laughs> so uh, this one's also got the uh, flathead screwdriver, the bottle opener, the wire stripper right there. It's also got the can opener with the smaller flathead screwdriver. Also got your uh, cork screw right there, the wine bottle opener. Mm-hmm. And you've got your all reaming tool right and there. You found out something on the uh, bottle opener over there that I did not realize. So, yes, this one, um, the bottle opener is uh, liner lock. So you'll see the word press right there, um, that is a liner lock on the bottle opener as well as the main blade. It is a liner lock right there. You'll see. So um, very important to note those two items right there are liner lock, which I think is is really cool. I like the way that they did that. Um, now this one, with it being a special edition, with it be having the Damascus blade, um, with it having the special wood handles, this one's coming in a little pricey at three seventy five, but it's a special edition. This is definitely a collector's piece, and um, it's a collector's piece that they made with extra care. It yeah. is something that you half can, stop, half stop, half stop on the uh, bottle opener. That's uh, that's really cool. So half stop right there. Close that down. That's also, like I said before, a liner lock. Well, like that one's got earlier, a half stop as well. You were saying earlier so. on that one for the liner lock that it engages or disengages the other way than what you're used to. Is that because yeah. of the uh, bottle opener engages the way you're used to? So that, yes, those yes. Offsets. So it, yeah, exactly. So that's a really really neat offering. And another thing I want to note is uh, this is not printed or stamped on there. That is actually a steel inlay mm-hmm. into the wood. So a steel inlay in that wood right there, which is very nicely done, very nicely the fit right is there. Always on point on yeah. uh, extras and going that extra mile, and making it everything. It is a beautiful knife. Right, it really is. And you've got a couple of more things to feature this time around. Yep. So I this, don't get one, to touch this one, <laughs> this one is uh, Benchmade's gold class release for this year. Um, now, as of the taping of this, this one will be released tomorrow. When you view this, it would have been a week ago. So we might have them, might not. We'll see. Um, We didn't get a lot of these in, but we do have a few of them. Um, But as always, with the gold class from Benchmade, uh, these are going to be very, very special editions. We're going to take a look at that one up close right there. Go over the specs on this puppy. Do we have it up online? Yes, I got you. Let me find a button. Button, button, button. The world for a button. I got buttons. So, this one's coming in at seven hundred dollars, and as of right now, we don't have this one available online. We do have it up online, but it's not available. And that's why I am not allowed to touch um, it. 
So this one is it features a 2.92 inch uh, drop point blade right there. Um, now this is the AEGIR pattern Damasteel blade. So this is actual Damasteel. What that is, that's a company out of Europe um, that actually makes powdered Damascus steel. So they do the same process with powdered steel and then fold it into Damascus pattern. So it's powdered Damascus steel. It's just another step in the process, and that's really what adds to the price, and that's what Benchmade has been known for um, for the last couple of years with their gold class releases. Now, this one is made in the USA. It is 3.84 inches closed, weighs just 2.24 ounces, and, of course, it's got the uh, fat carbon on the handles right there, the uh, anodized aluminum bolsters, and, of course, the axis lock right there, and the anodized uh Ambi thumb studs as well. And if you do, if you've never owned fat carbon or don't have a piece to be able to take outside in the sun, there is no way to accurately describe the studio right. lights, indoor lights. Just do not show that off. How deep that color really is on those, and how many different yeah. facets can be found. And also, um, this is another one, just like the uh, Victorinox. These are numbered. So this one has the number right there on the blade. This one's number 733. Um, so each one of these is numbered. Um, and this one, I don't know. We'll see. This one in particular might be a giveaway item coming up for National Knife Day. That, that, I, did not, I can't, I had, I I can't make any promises, but it's possible that this might be a giveaway item for National Knife have Day. Have you checked with other people on this? Are you pulling things out of nowhere? We're to- Folks, he said, I didn't. You didn't know a thing from me. I didn't say, nope. So we'll see about that. Um, don't know for sure, but that, that idea has been bounced around. So this might be a giveaway item for National Knife Day. Speaking of National Knife Day, that's coming up very soon. Very soon. August 24th, all right? Yes. So we're going to be live most of the day. We're going to be doing a ton of giveaways that day. I'm going to be so tired that week. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's going to be pretty insane. So we're really looking forward to that. Going to have a ton of giveaways that week, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. Speaking of things that you get to see in store, because we do have the big blue roof, 108,000 square feet, and we do have things that are in the showroom that are not online, and you brought one of those up. It's a non-knife. We sell non-knife things? Yeah, but we actually do have these available online. (gasps) They are? Yeah. You lied to me. You said they weren't. I did not say that. You you asked me, and I said I didn't know. (laughs) <laughs> but I want to start doing a non-knife um, item of the week. Uh, and the one for this week is going to be uh, gear ties. So these are really, really cool tools right here. And uh, actually, I'm going to use my fixed blade that I'm carrying with me, my Weatherford Heritage Series right here, to open this puppy up. We have lots of them online. Yeah. Yeah, we do. So this one is a variety pack. Um, It comes with several different ones, uh, two of each size, I believe there is, um, in this pack. So you get the small two-inch right there. We'll show them up close. Does this mean you're going to stop stealing my uh, zip ties? Doubtful. Uh. Um, Three-inch, excuse me, three-inch. I'm a guy. I can't measure. Um, So we've got the three-inch ones right there. We've got two of the six-inch ones right there. You can see, doubled over. Um, that's the way I like to stay. And uh, then we've got the two 12-inch ones right there. And then we've got the two 18-inch ones right there. Now, these are very, very useful um, for a lot of different purposes. Uh, if you need to secure gear um, to, say, a monkey board. So you've got some monkey boards. Do you want to secure some gear to it? I have monkey boards. You can use these. Um, Say you've got uh, molly webbing on something and you need to secure something to it. These will work great for that. Say you need to uh, maybe secure some cables that you have rolled up that you don't want to get tangled with other cables, but you got to stack them on top of one another. Um, uh, Me, when I'm playing gigs, that's been the bane of my existence, and that's why I got these right here, so that I can actually use these to wrap up individual cables, and that way they won't get tangled up together. So they have a lot of different uses. Um, They are flexible. They wrap. They twist. They're like uh, really heavy-duty twist ties, bread twist ties. I was about to say bread ties. Yep. Yep, that's exactly what they are. 
they're really heavy duty versions of that. Um, you can even secure stuff, uh, uh, secure rope, secure, you know, if you've got something that you're strapping down in the bed of a truck or something like that. And I so love, I love that they give you the bright options of having different yeah. colors. You're going to drop that somewhere and you're going to go, oh, there it is, instead of having to roll around and look for it everywhere. Exactly. Or, like you said, for wrapping up cords, use the black ones there and then it's unobtrusive. You're not going to yeah. notice it. It's not going to be distracting people. Exactly. Many I really options. dig those things. So that is our non-knife item of the week. I, I didn't know we had homework. I, I'll, I'll do better next time. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Y'all couldn't see that offline. He about knocked over all the boxes. About so, messed up everything. Um, everything? Everything. Everything. Now, the only thing we've got left to do is our picks. Dun, 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 dun. All right. Our picks. Our picks. First up, budget picks. What you got? I'm going first this time? Okay. I had to I had to back up and pump because the one I wanted, we only had a couple of, and I didn't want to do that to people. So I went back down, and I picked up a cold steel. This is the Mini Pal, and makes a great little neck knife, keychain knife, whatever you need. Pop loose. Boop. It is a very boopable knife. I like that. And, you know, I think it's a really tiny push dagger. Mm-hmm. But... I feel like this could be like really useful, especially as a neck knife if you work in like a warehouse or something as a box cutter, like oh, a yeah. box opener. Um, like if you need to open boxes and shit. Damn. You and your vices. I just, yeah. I, God, dog, that, that actually hurt. Um, but I think that would make a great little box yeah. opener right there. Twenty one ninety nine. This one is OS 8A, so it's going to be able to hold an edge really well. That one is double-sided. It's uh, uh, straight on one side, serrated on the other. So is if it? You, yeah, should be. No. Is it not? I no. Lied. That means it's available in more places. Yes. Yep. That's always good. So that one's serrated. So like you were saying, opening boxes, cutting twine, cutting line. Um, I've gotten in the habit, especially carrying my uh, Blue Land Overland uh, gear bag, yep. having one on a zip uh, tie on there or on the yeah. zipper. So that works really well for a, a knife like that. Is it going to be my only knife, my go-to knife? No, but it is a great backup knife. And for twenty one ninety nine, You can't beat that. No, I really like those. And I like the grip on that handle. I really dig that. We've been, we have been rubberized kind of yeah we've been digging a lot of cold steel and what they do. Uh, we did a daily grind the other day on that chaos buoy and yep. it blew up. It's really good. So if you've not got a cold steel, you're wanting to dip your uh, toes in the cold steel water. That's yeah, a great way to do it. And um, I don't know your beard. My budget. I went for <laughs> I went for a tiny as well. Um, I went with the Spiderco Honeybee. Now. I know I've said in the past that these were not useful knives. Um, and? I, I'm going to retract that. Now, uh, the, this could definitely be useful in a lot of different scenarios. I mm -hmm. think uh, you made a good point. This one is going to be great as a keychain knife. Um something of that nature maybe even a zipper pull knife mm -hmm. um if you get those zipper pulls that you know pop off um or um just like this rough rider buoy keep it on your desk if you've got an office job and use it as a letter opener or uh you know an envelope if, opener or something you, like that if you were working in an office that is not smoky <clears throat> mountain knife works it a lot of people look at you weird for having a larger knife in your pocket whenever you pop an yeah. eye. many of us have been there uh, Isaac had that happen at church. Yeah. So it is one of those that a smaller knife in different settings works out really well. And for a backup knife, a po a, a keychain knife, a zipper pull knife, whatever, yeah. these work great. And you came in at? 2240, excuse me, 2240. Um, it's 1.625 inch drop point blade, 0 0.078 inches thick, Uh just over two inches closed and uh, three point six inches overall, and weighing in at a half an ounce. Yeah, I mean, as long as you don't forget it's in your pocket, you're not going to feel it there. That thing is. Yeah. And 
with this being stainless steel all the way around, mm-hmm. this would be something that, and and with its price point, this would be something you're not going to feel bad about uh, dropping in, like accidentally leaving in your pants pocket and mm-hmm. wa- running it through the wash. Oh, the transitions on that one are very, it's very well made. The transitions are great. Re-oil it, and if something does happen to it, like you said, <clears> oil it up and get it right back into your yeah. DC. I think that's a that's a great option under I twenty like five it. bucks. I like that one. That was a good. Pull. That's a good pick. I think that was a good <clears> pull for you. Let's see for my mid range. Mid range picks. <laughs> I went with a K bar because I love a good K bar, really do. And we've had these in before. We've uh, we I think we did a daily grind on this one. Yeah. When we first got here, so that wasn't the gyros. The K bar gyros to rock. Yeah, that that. Yeah. What's all? What's all? I like that Turok design. I think it just looks really oh, cool. Ergonomically, it feels mm-hmm. really good in the hand. It fits really well in the hand. I love the sheath that comes with it as well because you can flip around and be able. It won't to fit in the camera shot. We'll back it up some. Back, back, back it up there. But it, but <laughs> it's, it's too high. There we go. It's fine. It's fine. I can it's go fine. Move the camera. No, it's fine. I can move it. Just 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 talk about it. It's 1095 Crovan steel, uh, 11.5 inches overall, 12.8 ounces. Uh, the I can't pronounce what kind of molded plastic that is. Huh? But Silicon. Silicon. Celiac. C- wow. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> But the molded plastic on it, it is molly uh, compatible, and you can switch this around to be a right or left carry on it real easy. Uh, take the strap off if you don't want to uh, carry it on your belt, and then just have it be molly compatible. Strap it to your bag or anything else like that. It is really, really well made. I really like these, and we've got them online right now, eighty seven ninety five. Wow. eighty seven ninety five. That's a heck that, of a deal. That can be your trail knife. That can be your camp knife. That can be that it can be an EDC all day long. And of course, probably made in the USA. Out of yeah. New York. Really like it. Absolutely. I like that thing. It's a good stick. <clears throat> well, for my mid range pick, I picked two knives. T C math? <laughs> no, so uh, the one that I originally picked, uh, we've got in our showroom right now. Um, we've only got a couple of them. Uh, we don't have them in our warehouse available online. Um, it's very possible that we will have them in our warehouse and uh, available online very soon. But it has a brother that's slightly larger. So we've got a couple of different versions. It's a Tops Bartender Defender. We've got the Bartender Defender and the Bartender Defender XL. And, of course, TC loves Topps knives, if for no other reason, because that they've got a limited lifetime guarantee, made in America, and <laughs> that. <laughs> you all have no idea. If he get, if I lose him in the store somewhere, all I have to do is wait for the whistle, and I know where he's at. Um, so the cool thing about these is going to be the bottle opener. The difference between the two is the location of the bottle opener. Um, now, we're going to show both of these up close. This one is the XL right there. And uh, we're going to show that one up close. Of course, they come with the uh, ball and chain lanyard. They come with the Kydex sheath. Now, the XL here, um, folks, only use this bottle opener in the sheath. That's why they made the sheath the way that they did. Um, so that you have access to the bottle opener right there. If you try to actually do this um, without the sheath, thank you for moving your arm away there from the device. Um, if you try to do use this bottle opener without the sheath, um, it's not going to go well for you because you're going to want to put your hand right there, and that's not going to work, folks. We're not saying that you can't do it. We're asking you not to. It's not a challenge. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, don't don't make that mistake. Yeah, you, you're not going to be happy having to get stitches in the pad of your thumb. Um, just telling you that, that right is, now. That is a terrible <clears throat> place to get a really good stitchy cut. It's just mm, yeah, no bad. So pick. that's a really cool one right there. I really like that um, having that bottle opener available um, while it's in the sheath. And then we've got the uh, Bartender Defender that has the bottle opener on the blade side. So the only sharpened portion is this very front tip um, that's maybe like three quarters of an inch long. Um, 
and then you've got the bottle opener right there. You've got the jimping on the back side. You can just pop open a cold one right there. Really, really like that. So the Bartender Defender, this one is the one that is uh, out of stock online. Um, we've got these for $68.95. They're made in the USA, 1095 carbon steel, um, and it is a full tang, skeletonized fixed blade right there. So $68.95, um, and then the uh, XL is uh, coming in at eighty ninety nine, I believe it is right now. As of the taping of this, um, it's on sale online. Um, we can't show the price. It's on sale. You have to add it to your cart. And so there we go. And that's a great point, folks. We run sales all the time whenever we're working with any of the vendors. That, uh, we carry so many in-house, yeah. and they have different sales throughout the year. You always know we're going to have National Life Day sales. You know we're going to have our Founders Day sales. We're going to have Black Friday, Cyber Monday, all that stuff. But check the website daily because different things go on sale every day. We have flash sales, eight deals every day at nine. Yep. Uh, check the email because I check the email every day. We have stuff in there that we don't know about. And that's where I found my high-end pick, actually. High-end pick! Uh, Pick. I did not go with a knife. Didn't. I didn't go. I didn't go with gear ties, but I didn't go with a knife. I got <sighs> this big mama jamma. That's huge. Yeah, you, you had not even seen this one before this. Yeah, so no. I, I hand this to you as I read stuff. <laughs> okay. So I don't think we're gonna even show this one I, on I, on I the on the small. You may have, you may have to do, close up. You know, close ups of the different uh, tools of everything. Because this is the Condor Tool and Knife uh, Black uh, Blackout Hawk Axe. It's designed by Tony Lenartz. And I shall read what they have said about it. The Blackout Hawk Axe was created by, as a handy and suitable access tool for authorities and support services. The use of the Blackout Axe is more advant uh, advantageous, uh, advantageous. advantageous, there we go, than frequently used door rams. So this is made. That was a good noise. Um, I was so. trying to figure out the best way to get that. Well, I like the, it because they, break that they've left the uh, top of it open there. That way you can pull down. Yeah. But it's also got on the kydex where it attaches in there. So it is on yeah. there thoroughly. It is It it's, is very tight on there. So it's yeah. going to be very secure. Yes. And that's going to be great, uh, making this a very safe tool mm -hmm. to use. If you're using it like you're using the pry bar at the end down there, um, which you've got a handle right here that you can use. So... If you go to pry it like yeah, that. And this goes back to make sure you've got the safety on the sharp edge if you're going to go and pry that. Yeah. Because, I mean, you've got a ton of tools on there. You've got a hammer. Mm-hmm. I need a hammer, a hammer, a hammer. Do it. hammer them down. I knew it. Um, so, yeah, I'm really digging yeah. this. Made in El Salvador. El Salvador, 1075, high carbon. Uh, the handle, paper micarta. Paper micarta handle, printer. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that is the blade itself is 7.3 inches. Overall, it's 18 inches. So, I mean, it's pretty good size, 42 ounces. Uh, and we've talked about this. We started doing our new series, if you have not watched it, EDC with TC. And one of the ones I'm pushing for is EDC with TC and your VEC, your vehicle. So this, to me, would be an excellent vehicle everyday yeah. carry. Yeah, it absolutely um, would. And coming in at 303.86 yeah and as heavy as it is as awesome right, look as it at is. look at how thick mm -hmm. that that full tang is that's insane that's craziness so yeah i dig that so hammer pry axe of course and you could choke up on that could you use this in the camp yes could you use this to split wood yes is it made for that no it's made to be a tool all around safe space a safe, safe space saver. Space saver. <laughs> it's made to be a space saver. Safe. Order in the court. Space. Safe space. I want my space. Safe space. Next one's your hand. Come here. But <laughs> are there knives to safe spaces? That'd be good. But this thing is really awesome. And like I said, a little over three hundred bucks. I really dig this tool. All right. So my high end. Your is going to be something brand new. Just uh, We just made these available online um, in the last week, and they're brand new. Now, if you watched our Blade Show videos, uh, you got to see us go over these um, with Heretic, um, and we talked about these. We've actually got them in stock now. We're really excited. So this is the Heretic Slight, 
and this is a modular knife design. So we're going to go over this really quick right here, right now. So the actual slight comes in as a push dagger. looks like this. Um, this is the sheath that it comes in. Um, has the uh, Molly compatible. So this piece right here rotates this way. So that piece rotates out of the way. And then once you do that, you just squeeze these two tabs in and it opens up. Now, this is Molly compatible. Um, and you can actually adjust right here the width of the belt that you want to put it on. Then you just close it down around the belt, clip it in place, and then move the uh, safety lock in place. And that's going to make it super secure. So if you want to put it on a tack vest or something like that, um, I can definitely see LEOs using this on... Uh, on tack vests and things like that, military, um, it's going to be a great option. So it comes in the push dagger format. We're going to go ahead and take it out of the sheath, and I'm going to get I'm going to get my hand away from the uh, the vice the vice again. Um, so this is what it looks like, and uh, really really cool design right here. So this is really neat. You'll notice that it looks kind of different on this back side. One thing that's important to note, this is 20 CV on the blade steel right here. So um, very, very durable steel, very high-end steel, CPM 20 CV. Um, the cool thing about it is it's only a single bevel grind. Mm -hmm. So when you go to sharpen it, you're only going to sharpen this side right here. It is double-edged, but you're only going to sharpen this side. You don't need to bevel this side as all, at all. Mm -hmm. um, because it's not ground on that side at all. Now, the interesting thing about this, so this package right here comes with the sheath um, and the push dagger, and we've got them in black, and we've also got them in the very striking green color. I like this green. Um, the green color is fantastic. Um, really dig that. Feels really good in the hand. Um, these are going to be aluminum anodized handles right here. Uh, and very grippy. They feel really good in the hand and uh, really, really dig those things. So those are 215 right there, 20 CV, and that's a thick chunk of 20 CV right there. So Now, for the 215, you get the blade. Push dagger, the, the blade, um, and you get the sheath, mm -hmm. all right? So for another $100, you can upgrade and have yourself a fixed blade. So all you do is if you look at the back side right here, you've got three torque screws right there that you just pop that blade off, and it fits on the fixed blade right here. And so then you're going to have that blade mounted on this. And here's the best part. So right now you're into it, $315. 315 for one blade, two handles. Two handles. You've got either the push dagger or the fixed blade right mm -hmm. here, which is going to make a great like tactical fixed blade. The same sheath works for both of them. Mm -hmm. The same sheath. So you don't have to swap sheaths. You've got a fixed blade and a push dagger, and you get to use the same sheath. Um, I think that's a really cool, uh, really cool design right there. And um, really great price, mm -hmm. especially you know coming from Heretic and with premium materials. Um, as always, these are going to be serialized. So you've got the serial number right on there. Um, this is called the Slight, and you've got the Slife handle accessory. Slife? <laughs> Slife. Slife. Slight. Slife. Slight. Handle accessories. Um, and you've got the uh, push dagger right there. So um, for 315 for the total package, 215 if you just want the push dagger. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's really cool. I think that's, uh, that's awesome. And like I said, you get the... Uh, you get the sheath, you get the belt clip, and I mean, heck, those belt clips can be, you know, easily oh, I mean, it's a, thirty bucks. It's a great package in and of itself. Being able to change out your knife, and I mean, that's something we've talked about many times. Uh, Having the modularity, us, yeah. Have the modularity and be able to change out your EDC to fit what you're doing on the day. Yeah, that's a great one to wear on a vest, to put on uh, with your range bag or anything else, like you said. Um, I love the shape of them, and you can get a really good grip on that uh, uh, on the first one and on that uh, fixed blade for the second for that more straight, more traditional. Yeah. And it is double-sided, like you said, so it is a dagger. Always check your local knife loss. Uh, so knifeloss.org. Yeah. Always. Absolutely. 
Well, the only thing left besides talking about a whole bunch of new Rough Riders, some brand new Baron Sons, some wonderful new knives that we've got in store that we don't even have online yet. And you guys get to see them first because they're getting them on for yep. you. We are still working on that. So what do you got in pocket today? Oh. Oh. I'm carrying my MILF. I didn't see Liz here. <laughs> <laughs> so what are we carrying? Hardcore Knives, uh, Mill Spec Folder Series. Uh, I've got my, um, this one is the uh, Recurve Tonto right here. Um, S30V on the blade steel. Uh, it is a frame lock. Um, it is and, the definition of overbuilt. Yeah, it absolutely is. I really dig this thing. Um, and I've got my lanyard right there with the uh, skull on it. Uh, really, really dig this thing. Now, the cool thing that I love about this it's a four-way pocket clip, um, but there's so many different ways to open it, and it makes it really fidgety. Um, so you can open it with the uh, flipper back here, just like that. Mm -hmm. um, you can also open it with the thumb stud, which the, it comes with uh, different thumb studs that you can put in either one of these three holes. I chose this spot um, because that's where I like it. Um, so, yeah, that's my uh, that's my MILF. I mean, it's a great carry. When that came in, you were the first person down there getting it out of the case. It is very cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I dig patch. this one. So, I mean, and it's all the way around. Yeah. Over -built. And that's my, that's my modern folder. So, usually for my ADC, I carry a modern folder. Mm -hmm. I carry a slip joint, and I carry a fixed blade. Mm -hmm. I've got my um, Weatherford Heritage Series. Um, fixed blade that's the one i've been that's been my go-to for uh quite a while now um since before blade show mm -hmm. and uh really digging that one and for my slip joint i've got a fifth pocket carry right here uh, in my jeans in my tight fitting jeans i knew he was gonna do it um and i've got my uh little mini coper head oh your coper head yep really really digging that one um and we, so, yeah. we may have been talking to Brian earlier about some new triple RRRs. Some RRRs. So, guys, keep your eyes out on those. Yeah. Those are going to be very cool. I'm I'm an old fuddy-duddy. I stick with the traditionals. I got, oh, I you got what do you got? I just got my uh, GEC. Oh, yeah. My, well, my Tidio. Um, One this of his is other the, vices uh, that he doesn't slam his yeah. elbow into. So, um, yeah, that's my brand new Oxblood GEC right there. Really Beautiful dig that colors. one. 35 pattern, um, three blade. Really, really digging that one. That's uh, so uh, GEC and TDU knives. Uh, those are um, those are definitely my vice that I have for collecting. So, and folks, when they do go up online, make sure you sign up for the notifications because they go up, they sell quick every single time. Collectors love those things. And no, I'm not buying all of them. <laughs> you don't make enough to buy all of them. No. All right, and I'm I'm old. I'm very I carry the same things. I got my marbles, uh, brass VG10. That has become my go-to around the farm. Twenty six ninety nine online, and I'm starting. You can really see the patina on that thing. Yeah. Uh, coming up on one year anniversary on the twenty fourth of carrying that Kaiser. Yep. That's been since uh, that's the Kaiser Kismic. They have discontinued this one, but this has been a great blade. And you look at all the schmutz on that. I, yeah. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh, we, we you've uh, you put that one through the ringer well we we redid the office yesterday and did that uh, opened and broke down a lot of boxes and then my little ronald mcdonald five dollar knife that's the one when somebody out and about goes hey i need to borrow a knife that's there the you one go you're getting yep yep and then they don't ask me for to borrow my knife no more carry one <laughs> guys let us know down in the comments below yeah what did you see on the table that you didn't know about what new things you want to see next time around also stay tuned for national knife day august 24th also if you're around and in town uh, we're gonna have the folks from catching deers here on the 20th saturday the 20th from four to seven we're also gonna have a meet and greet with rut daniels himself and, and we so, are staying open that late so normally yes. we're 10 to 6 we're gonna be 10 to 8 that night yep. so a little bit late for smkw so four to seven um, you're going to get to meet and greet with Rut Daniels, see the guys from uh, Catching Deers. We're really excited about that. They're going to be in store here with us. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be a lot of fun. I think that's everything. Yeah, that's everything. Everything? Everything. 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 We had all the knives and everything. Yeah. So, uh, folks, thank you so much again. Knife Show 26 in the books. 
And uh, you guys are awesome. We really appreciate you. And uh, remember, if it cuts. Like everything we have on the table. Like a new knife, except for gear ties. Um, then you we carry it. Bo- you had to go and blow it with a non-knife. We, 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 we carry it. If we carry all this, we're going to need your you know, tack pants again. Sidekick reporting for duty, sir. <laughs> I gotta get a better sidekick. I don't get fan mail. Dude, lies. I, I have a poster board full of it. You have lanyards. I'm not supposed to know about the lanyards. People are sending you secret lanyards. You and your lanyard secrets. <laughs> what? Hey. What? <laughs> Wait, which knife show is this? Okay, we said 25 last time, so I went to public school, but if you take 25 26. and add one, something. Math. Knives! <laughs>